having a job looks riskier and more difficult now than having a business. They say that when you aim for the sky, you fall on the roof. But if you aim for the stars, you might fall on the moon. Hi, my name is Coach Antonio, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about seven lies society has told us. Let's go. You can't help what you're taught growing up. I mean, I was taught different things growing up. It's not my parents' fault. It's not anyone else's fault. It's just the way we were taught in society. After all, you're not in control until you become old enough and have self-awareness. You don't have self-awareness yet when you're a kid or a toddler or, you know, someone growing up. Society has a way of brainwashing us, media, social media, and it feeds you a lot of BS throughout our entire life. I'm going to talk about seven of the biggest lies that society tells you. Let's go with lie number one, which is if you have good grades or good marks in school and you go to a good college and then you have a good job, you're going to have a peaceful and happy life. Well, that's a lie. Getting in a good school gives you better chances. Don't believe those people that say uh, Mark Zuckerberg is a college dropout from Harvard. He made it. If you can name 50 to 100 of those dropouts that became billionaires, okay, school gives you better chances. I'm not saying drop out of school. It's just not a requirement. I'm just saying it's not a requirement that when you fail, when you're that you're gonna succeed for sure when you go to college. It's not. If you have the higher scores, if you're the valedictorian in your batch, it doesn't guarantee you're gonna be the wealthiest or the most successful. No high grades, no college or job is going to guarantee you a peaceful and happy life. The relationships that you have, your mental health and your physical health, well, that's a different story. Especially your inner peace. I know if if you follow me on social media, I really talk about mental health and how important is your inner peace always because it determines the quality of your life. I've had years on top of years wherein I only had three hours, four hours of sleep just because I didn't have peace of mind. There were times wherein I was just tossing and turning in bed when I was sleeping. I was a noisy sleeper because there was just too many things on my head before I went to sleep. There was just too many things running through my head. Now, I sleep and wake up whenever I want. Not because it's short, but I now I'm able to sleep seven to nine hours and it doesn't worry me. Unlike before, we're in, you know, you sleep for three to five hours. It's just so difficult because I don't think of my problems before going to sleep anymore. I deal with my problems the next day. If it's a problem, it's something I can solve because a problem always has a solution. And if your problem doesn't have a solution, it is something you need to endure. I keep on repeating that. I'm sorry if you're a continuous listener of me. It's the same message I always put over and over again until thousands and thousands of people understand that concept. That's lie number one. It's not a guarantee of a peaceful and happy life. Like, you have good grades in school, you have good college, you have a good job. It's not. I can tell you, I don't want to say this, but those who have the highest grades in our school, they make the best employees. They make the best employees in the top-notch companies. The best companies, the international companies. I'm not going to say who they are, but those who have like the highest marks in school, they don't own businesses. They're all employed. They're highly paid, for sure. They're secure with their job. You know, they, they have a great life. I'm just saying that they're not meant for entrepreneurship. Because when you have high grades, you're the target of the best company. They're gonna sway you with a nice salary package. We'll give you a car, a house, all these benefits and such. Work with us. Because I felt I was so dumb in school because I wasn't great at memorizing things. Especially things I'm not interested about like world history or any sort of history or science. If I wanted to know anything about the presence of the Philippines or president of another country or the map of a country or I don't know, anything historical, all I can do is say, hey Google, hey Siri, hey Alexa, or just type in on my phone. It's information is there. Why do I need to memorize it? I know you need to be aware of the history even in politics and stuff. Really, it's not a requirement for you to become successful to be honest. It's not. I mean, you could argue with that. Argue with me in the comment section. Let me know. Now, let's go to lie number two, which is wealth is always about status, fancy cars and big job titles. You've seen it all. He's the CEO and he has a Ferrari and he has a always worse, you know, fancy brands, you know, flashy things all the way, posting whatever 
where that person bought every day. Wealth is this. Wealth is not visible. It's invisible. It's not seen. Just because you wear a branded shirt here that's $100, it doesn't mean you're rich. It just meant that you spent $100 for a shirt instead of spending $5 for a shirt. It, it doesn't change anything. I've gone through there. I've gone through that phase in my life where in I thought a brand is your status because it's a reputation that you need to keep. It's not. True wealth isn't about how many cars you have or you own, even if it's your hobby or how big your house is, if it's on mortgage, if you're still paying for it or it's, it's just a rental. It's so easy to flex that you have a nice car if it's just rented or a house in Forbes Park or some fancy village and then you know it's, it's just a rental. True wealth is having a few of these things. It's the freedom to spend time with your family whenever you want, do whatever you want, whenever you want with them. Having a fit and healthy body and mind. A peaceful and calm mind at all times. That's why you're able to sleep. Because if you don't have any worries, if you don't have any money problems, it means that you are at peace. Because you don't have to worry about paying your bills at the end of the month. Because you know it's already paid for. You have financial independence or financial freedom. That's wealth. It's that basic as it is. If you want to work comfortably with a job, do it. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I need people to work. Labor is something that you use your wealth. If you can have someone do 80% of your capacity through work and you can afford it, then outsource it. That's the basic premise of it. That's how you expand your business. If you enjoy and love doing it, there's no harm. If you enjoy your job and you're not complaining, that's my problem with people is that they have a job and they complain about it. You're gonna say, it's so easy for you to say that because you don't have bills to pay. And no one's putting a gun to your head to stay in your job just because you need to pay for things or your loans and, and sh there's no harm. There's nothing wrong with, with staying in a job as long as you love it. There's something wrong with your job if it doesn't make you grow and there's no learning. Either of those two, if one is gone, what's the use? You're in something that's putting you something over and over again. There are jobs wherein you will continue to grow. There are jobs that wherein you'll continue to get better and better and improve yourself like what you do. It's something that gets you into a better position, increases your value even further up to the point that I cannot afford you anymore. It's inevitable as long as you keep growing and you keep learning. But if you stop learning and say you pass on work like you edit stuff that you know in Tagalog puede na or passable work then you won't go anywhere if you don't push your boundaries to the close to the to your limit then you're not challenging yourself when you don't challenge yourself you're gonna stay stuck to being mediocre you always challenge yourself to perform things at an extra gear at the higher level when I say put your right hand up as high as you can and then you put it up and I tell you a little bit higher you're able to do it right it's the basic premise it's just that way you just don't wanna do it this way already as high as you can because you're so lazy doing it because you're comfortable with this with this stance that's number two wealth isn't about status fancy cars or big job title let's go to line number three which is business is too risky that's why most people don't want to do business they're comfortable with having a job people say business is risky it's better to have a nine to five job have any of those people ever heard about the word AI it's gonna come and eat it's gonna eat a lot of jobs there's so many jobs that are gone now they're obsolete because of AI AI. Manufacturing, delivery, sooner or later, everything is going to be AI. In this way, having a job looks riskier and more difficult now than having a business. I'm not saying a job is bad. We need jobs because the world will not operate without people working. If you want to do it, do it. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you love doing it. So that's lie number three, which is business is too risky. It's not. Lie number four, your grades or your marks determine what your intelligence is. Well, that's a lie. Good scores in school does not mean that you are intelligent. It just means you're great at memorizing things, number one. And having knowledge and skills define your intelligence. All billionaires, they have one great thing that they're great about. And that's their moneymaker. If Bill Gates is great at one thing, he's not great at another. If Elon Musk is great at pushing his boundaries in terms of tech, there's something else that he's not. But he doesn't focus on that. You focus on your strength and what you're good at because that's what you can offer. Like me, I'm focusing on marketing and sales because that's my thing. I don't focus on accounting or operations. That's not my thing. But my focus is on marketing and sales. I'm keeping my lane into that. One thing I learned is that you don't want to be a jack of all trades. You want to be a master of one to two skills. And skills that pay the bills, they say. Anyone can get marks by cramming or cheating. I mean, I passed college in high school by just copying from my classmates and my blockmates. I'm not proud of it. But you know, I got so bored with college that I just wanted to pass. That was my goal. I wanted to pass. So the passing grade was two. If you average below two, you're going to repeat or fail. But I was average at least 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. I never wanted like 2.73. I didn't want that. I just wanted to pass. I failed once on subject. That's it. Repeat on one subject. But the rest, I just wanted to pass. And when you 
do that, you're just trying to coast. Because I'm bored during that time. I was already making money selling computers. When you're already making money and then you're studying at the same time, studying will make it boring for you. That's why you want to focus on one thing, one thing only, which is pass and graduate. Don't run after high grades. Run after knowledge and having skills. And the thing is, you don't have to be in a great school to have those. You have Google, you have YouTube, there's books. And if you can't afford books, you can have ebooks. You can go to websites to provide ebooks, put it on your Kindle. I have over 600 books on my Kindle app, and I probably read one eighth of those yet. Th those are the books I've, I've read. It's less. And it's all free. I probably bought three books. The rest, if I can download them, I download them. It's not an excuse to learn. In addition to that, I wanted to say this I don't hire people based on their grades. Like, I never asked them, were you valedictorian in high school or you did, did you have honors in college or were you the best speaker were you were you the best in math in science no i wanted to see what's your previous work your actual work what have you done before and i want to see attitude because your character and attitude is something that no school can teach you because if that's your habit that's who you are as a person then it's hard to change that skill is something that can be taught you've seen that the skill is something that you can learn once you're already working but your work ethic how you think and how you work with others as a team that's really important in building a good culture wherever you are wherever you go think good team players i never check I didn't even know what which schools you came from until you told me that you came from this school, that school. What's your school? I don't even remember. I know his school. I don't even care. Doesn't matter. You know, uh, international, multinational companies. They check, oh, because those will become the great managers. If you get someone with a good MBA, they're they're gonna be meant to be senior managers and COOs, CFOs. They would make very good CEOs in the future, right? For companies. It's in the book by Jim Collins, uh, From Good to Great. They talk about getting level five leaders or developing level five leaders inside a company, which are more successful rather than hiring someone or pirating someone that's a CEO from another company and then moving them to us as a CEO because he never learned the culture. As as a, as a AVP or a, or a manager, senior manager, he didn't work his way up. So he doesn't know the culture from down there all the way up. That's the difference between getting someone from outside, even if they're great, and getting someone that's ready inside. That's why in the, in the BPO, we like getting someone from the agent level, going up, level G, level F, before they become level B or C. Leadership is something that you can learn. It's not something you're born with. I thought leaders are born. No, they're made. Leaders are made. If you're born a follower, you could be a leader yourself, but it takes time. It's not overnight that a leader is made. The easiest way to check that is, for example, in sports. It's rare for a rookie to become a team leader. Very rare. Because you don't get respect from the veterans right away. Most likely on their third year or fourth year, that's when they become vocal, more vocal leaders. LeBron James, even how great he was as a rookie, he still had veterans on his team that he had to follow. Same with Michael Jordan. There were veterans on his team. But during the third, fourth year, that's when they have the knowledge and stuff to actually lead. It takes time to develop. That's line number four which is your scores don't determine your intelligence. By the way, if you're enjoying this episode, a subscribe to the channel would be dazzling. Moving on to lie number five, which is you cannot dream big. You just have to have a safe dream. Having a safe dream is very dangerous. They say that when you aim for the sky, you fall on the roof. But if you aim for the stars, you might fall on the moon. When you make goals for yourself, there's a fine line between having a goal that scares you and at the same time excites you. When you find the balance between something that scares you and that line that's, that excites you at the same time to wake up every morning, oh my God, I could fail at this. I could suck in this but at the same time what if i succeed holy shit. that's the middle part you want to be at being safe and scared being successful and not you want to find that excites you but scares at the same time that's your starting point your goal should be so every time i have a new student when i ask them what's your personal goal when they for example they say oh i just want to make i'd be happy if i have five million pesos in my bank account i'm good i'd be happy i'd be set for life i have five million where do you base that what's your basis oh because my friends they have two million they send them their bank account and they're okay. They're fine. That's my basis. I'm comparing myself to others. That's why that's my base. That's not your roof. That's not your ceiling. When you make a ceiling for yourself based on others, it's because that's a company you're in with. That's why they have the saying that when you hang out with five losers, you're the six. Hang out with five winners, you're the six. Hang out with five rich people, most likely you could become the six. You could, probably. But there's a bigger chance you will. That's why if you're in an environment that is really bad, you're gonna be a victim of, of that environment. That's why you have to put yourself out of that environment. That's the one thing. Because you're in the company of people of like-minded people. Birds of the same feather flock together, right? So if you're in the people just talk about rumors, then what are you gonna do about it? You're gonna do the same thing. People always that are around us tell us not to think 
big and sell for less. They are absolutely wrong about that. You have their full right to have big dreams, big aspirations, even if other people laugh at you. If you say that you want to make a billion pesos, that's your dream. I mean, your friends, your family can laugh at you because they haven't achieved it. They say, how can you achieve one billion? We haven't even made past 10 million pesos with our fam. What are you talking about? But that's them. It's not you. You're made different. If it starts here, because you don't shut down. That's why I told you, right? You're not shutting yourself down and said, can't afford it. Instead, you ask yourself, how can I afford it? Now your mind's thinking. If you want to say, oh, I want to make 100 million in two years' time, how can I make that? So now you're thinking of plans, devising. Regardless if it's good or bad, it's evil or not. If it's doing something legal or legal, hey man, that's your hustle. I don't care. But you have an idea. It all starts with an idea. It's probably going to be the riskiest thing that you can ever do in life. Everything comes with risks. Everything. You yourself, I mean, just going to work is a risk. Traveling, going to work is a risk. Going home from work is a risk. Everything is a risk in life. What risk are you willing to take for yourself that would make you free for the rest of your life? It's up to you. Line number five, you can't dream big. That's a lie. Let's go to number six. Line number six, which is you have to work hard to become rich. That thing I determined to be a lie. The thing is, hard work alone cannot make anyone rich. Here's why. If working hard would have been the case for your success, then every man who did blue collar work would have been a millionaire, right? Every carpenter, every laborer, everyone doing hard labor. That's hard work. The one that collects the trash, that's hard work. Everyone that carries something in their head, traveling, you know, 10 kilometers, bringing something around. Or the guy said, selling me my favorite taho every day. That's hard work. How come he's not doing well? I'm not trashing on them. But it's not just hard work. When they say, work hard, study hard, work hard, you have a good life. Who told that? Who, who told us that it's going to be the norm? You need to have a right direction where you want to go. It's not going to work anymore when you say, work hard, and then you'll be set. I mean, who determined like 65 is your retirement age? Like who said? Retirement is not a number in terms of age. It's a number based on money. You can retire when you have this much in your investment. You can retire when you have this much interest that's coming into you or the power of compound interest on your investment. When you're 21 and you made certain investments, you could be retiring at age 30. I have friends that live in other countries, but because their cost of living is very low, they don't have any problems. They don't have bills to pay. They live off 100,000 pesos a month based on their interest and what they make. And this is percentage. And their wealth continues to build. So their money is working for them. So why do you work for money? Remember the concept about poor people selling their time for money versus a wealthy person selling their value for money instead. And you make your money work for you. You need to know whether the input you're putting in is worthy of putting something or not. Everything that you do, you need to make sure that it's worthy of doing it now because you're doing something for yourself, for your future. Easier said than done. Always. People are gonna say that. Easier said than done. Or you don't know my situation. Again, when you're already discounting yourself of that, then you're not going anywhere. If you hear people like that, most likely those people are never gonna be successful. Never. I've had so many followers like that. Like, oh, easy for you to say you're in a good situation. Talk to me when you have four kids and you know you have loans and bills to pay. Everyone has problems. It's up to you how you want to get out of your problems because you're thinking of your solution for yourself. Line number six, again, work hard if you want to become rich. Mm -mm. It's not just working hard. It's working smart and working today your ass off for your future self that your future self would be thankful for. Lastly, let's go to line number seven, which is more money means more happiness. The more money you have, means that you become more happy. Jim Carrey said it best. I wish everyone would be wealthy and famous so that they will know that money and fame isn't everything. So many people talk about it that wealth can only make you happy for so long. When you have all the money there, money is an amplifier. It amplifies who you are as a person. If you're a depressed person and if you have money, you're going to become more depressed with money. If you're a person who's insecure and you have more money, guess what? Your insecurity will add to that even further. It will just amplify. Money is an amplifier of who you are. If you're a good person, if you're a giving person, Person, if you have more money, what's gonna happen? You're gonna be a more giving, more generous person, right? If you're a douchebag or a bitch of a person and you don't even have money yet, imagine if you have all that money. That's why I remember something, a friend, I forgot the name, but someone told me before, like, you know what, Antonio, it's very scary if you become wealthy. I, I think it was in my early 20s because when you become wealthy, you're gonna be a bigger asshole <laughs> based on who you are now if you continue your ways of being that. I just didn't care about other people's emotions and thoughts. I wasn't sensitive. I was, okay, 
care about myself. Because when you're 18 to 21 years old and you have millions in your bank account and you're self-made, no one gave you money for that and you have all that money in the bank that you can spend, you become very arrogant. And it hit me when I lost everything. <laughs> when I lost all that money that I made selling computers back then. It's a lesson I'll never forget. It's gonna amplify who you are as a person. I never forget that. When it comes to happiness, money plays a small role in it. Money will solve your money problems, but it will not solve your problems. Two different things. You have money problems and you have problems. Money problems. What are money problems? Loans, debts, bills, mortgage, all those things. So that's money problem. You're able to solve that. How about if you're depressed? If you're lonely? Oh my God, that horrible thing. John Wayne quote that, you know, I'd rather cry in a Ferrari rather than, you know, in a Corolla. If you're happy in a Corolla, why do you need to cry? <laughs> right? I ima imagine that. Like, you're already happy in a Corolla. What more if you get the Camry? It does not make sense. Happiness comes more from your loved ones. It doesn't come everything that, uh, that everything material or monetary that you've accumulated. There's a study that said people are more happy in, in the study who gave away their $100 instead of them going to the mall and buying something for themselves. The level of happiness into giving someone that $100 instead of using that for themselves is just way higher. There was a test wherein 100 people were given $100. 50 of them were asked to buy something for themselves. And other 50 were asked to give it to someone that needed it or they wanted to give it to. The level of happiness is just way, way, way higher than someone who just bought a $100 pair of sneakers. You're so proud every time you're able to help someone, right? And that's why videos like those on social media go viral right away. Like this person gave away something to the poor person, something like that. It goes viral. It's one of the biggest things. Like it's one of the biggest trends. Like YouTubers giving away cash to someone that didn't know they were receiving something. Having those people around you and spending quality time with the people that matter to you will give you real happiness. I mean, think about it. When you're able to spend time whenever you want, wherever you want, with the people that you love and care about, isn't that going to make you happy? Think about your dream destination with all the people that you care about the most, that you respect their opinions the most, and you're hanging out with them in that place. Think about it. Leave in the comment section down below. Let me know which place you want to go with who and would it make you happy? Most likely it will. If that makes you sad, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> if that's something that makes you sad, then it's weird. So that's line number seven. More money means more happiness. Mm -mm, that's a lie. So that's all I have for you today. If you found value in today's episode, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you again on the next episode. Peace.